Hi viewers, welcome back to Mom and Jess Women Talk Show. So this is our very last episode in the Teenage Series. So please, I want you all to kindly stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and catch up with Mrs. Vera Mbue Mary. She actually is a child versus teen advocate, so she will sure do justice to this topic by God's grace. So just my little take, you know, with regards to this topic, I have one or two things to, you know, share with you guys. We all understand that we're living in the millennial age and uh, children that are being raised of in these days, you know, if you apply the same wisdom and, you know, whatever that our parents in those days, you know, used for us, oh, we actually will lose some of our children at some point, especially the teenagers. So the reason for this topic is just to help us out, especially with kids that are getting to teenage age and those that are teens, actually. Why do we um, title the topic teenage exuberance? Actually, when teenagers get to this stage of life, when they get into their teenage age, the energy, the vibes, you know, the moods, the expression, the manner of expressing themselves and all of that is what is uh, referred to or termed as exuberance. So sometimes you could be on a positive note or on a negative note, depending on probably the way the child has been raised. Because I believe that at, uh, to, uh, to some extent, the way a child is being raised determines how the child will turn out to be as a teenager. You know, so it, it really has to do with, you know, we playing our roles from the onset. You know, what foundation have we laid for the kids? What um, grounding have we laid? What examples have we served? You know, what mode of communication have we been applying in our homes? So, but most importantly, I believe that when children get to that teenage age, certain things, you know, have to be put, you know, into control or you have to subject yourself to certain things. Number one for me is, you know, learn to dialogue more with the children rather than scolding and, um, you know, violence or, or punishment, you know, the corporal punishment and flogging. And yes, especially for we parent, African parents who have been raised by being, you know, being beaten and all of that. But applying it in the, for the millennial children, especially the teenage age, at some point they will start rebelling, they will start revolting. So I pray the Lord will help us. It's good to sit with them more often than not and, and rather than scold. You know sit with them have a dialogue i understand that sometimes parents can you know just get furious or lose their cool and you know throw off you know in a scold and all of that but put yourself together more often than not and learn to pass your message in a more mature way to teenagers i think they handle it better especially our millennial teenagers then most importantly praying in fact this should have been number one spend time and letting grooming them in the in the word of god they should attend as many as um, Bible studies, youth study, uh, youth fellowship programs, teenage programs that are being organized by church. By the grace of God, if you are planted in a church that you know is filled with um, the Spirit of God, they are the men of men and women of God, genuine men and women of God. They will make room for teenagers to you know grow spiritually, and this will help them in time to start you know having a connection with the Holy Spirit, feeling when the Spirit of God is nudging or speak, speaking through them. You know, it doesn't have to be; they don't have to be adults to get to know Christ. They should learn to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So, but it starts with the parents. You give them, you set the example. You know, it is often said that, um, you know, um, a tree, if an apple or a fruit does not fall far from the tree. So, what examples are you setting? actually for your children are you laying the right example you can't be a father that smokes and then yell at your teenager for not smoking definitely he's seeing it and then that is an example even if he does not do it in your presence definitely he might pick it up and he might decide to do it in your absence i believe that there are some other teenagers that learn all of these habits from friends so also we should pay a point and we should pay um, cognizance is the fact that we consider the kind of influence or friends they keep if you make if you make a good friendship or you have a good rapport with your teenagers you know at that age you make them more like your friends but they should understand boundaries they should know that parent a parent is a parent but at the same time let them be your friends let them feel free to share with you who you, who their friends are by this time you should understand your friend your daughter your children and the kind of friends they have know them my name and then the kind of personalities they possess and then you should be able to discern by grace of God if such friends will influence them positively and neg or negatively. So all of these are very important roles that parents ought to play, especially when they... Um, the teenagers are, are getting, especially for the girls, I believe that the girls, why I pay more attention to the girls? Because they are prone to have more mood swings and, you know, tantrums and all of that. I'm not saying the boys do not, 
But if you pay attention to the girls in this aspect of mood swings in time, you'll be able to help them manage it. And for the guys as well, sometimes they display arrogance, stubbornness, you know, going out and coming back late and all of that. I, pr I pray the Lord will help each and every one of us. It's not an easy phase of life, raising teenagers. In fact, when teenagers pass that age and you're able to raise a well-groomed child, you give glory to God. It's, it's not easy, especially in the times we live in. So we pray the Lord will help each and every one of us. I do not want to say so much, but I believe that our um, our guest for this session or episode will definitely give us much more. So please stay tuned and kindly catch up with Mrs. Vera. I believe you, I believe me, you will be blessed. She actually runs an online platform on Facebook and you can follow up with her on Facebook as well. She, she handles areas and matters and issues that concerns children and teenagers and you know, it will also help for you to, um, you know, let your children and teenagers listen to some of her discussions on Facebook. So please, until then, see you very, very soon. Stay tuned, catch up, and please remember to subscribe, drop your take-homes, and even questions, if possible, she will sure give an answer to it. God bless you. Bye.